Well, welcome everybody to the uh, online commons, and we have more canned peas than we have ever had in the online commons, and that's for a very good reason, uh, because I'm joined today by Adam Ziegler, the executive director of New Hope Compassionate Ministries and the pastor of the homeless church that meets there. Adam, welcome to the program. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me on. So, um, tell us a little bit about, uh, I was down there this Tuesday shooting that video we saw earlier in the service, and that place was a hive of activity. There was people running everywhere, there was bags everywhere, there was uh, COVID remediation everywhere. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do down there at New Hope? Yeah, so one of the cool things that we do at New Hope is our Tuesdays, and that's a uh, food pantry. We like to call it a food market, and uh, we give out free food to families in need um, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the afternoon, and it is an amazing program. We give out probably about $100 worth of groceries, probably six or seven or eight bags of groceries and all sorts of things, canned foods, uh, dry goods, fresh foods okay, now when, when you say a hundred dollars worth of groceries like i was looking at the amount of groceries you had you had more <laughs> yeah. than a hundred dollars you mean like a hundred dollars per person a hundred dollars per person per family per family okay yeah Beautiful. um if you went to the store to buy it you filled up a cart we probably would give give like half a cart like a full cart is probably 150 dollars. probably half or three quarters of a cart um of food, all sorts of types of food. Um, we give away frozen meats, uh, dairy products, cheese, eggs, um, pastries, milk, all sorts of things. And it goes to families in need. And for many of them, that's like two, three, maybe four days worth of food, depending on how big or small your family is. Um, yeah, I so got a family huge. of seven, so uh, we'd burn through that in a meal and a half. That's, yes. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. So um, the, yeah. Uh, Food distribution, that's sure. a classic uh, Christian thing to be doing. They're doing it in Acts chapter 2, right? Yep. Like, that's like one of the first things we picked up. Yep. Um, and I, Kyle said, you said in the video, this shocking number to me, yeah. which is that basically since COVID hit, mm -hmm. you've added a thousand families mm -hmm. to the roster? Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, so since COVID has hit, every week we're seeing probably 20 to 30, sometimes even 40% of our clients for that week are brand new. They've never been to our food pantry before, never been to our food market. Um, in March, April, and May, we had almost 200 f new families each month. I think March was like 175, and then April was like 150, and uh, May was another probably 150, 175. So like people are coming and then it slowed down for a little bit. And then over the last two months, we've seen that number come back up 175, 150 new, new families. And these are folks who, for whatever reason, they're in need of food. They're in need of uh, support. They're in need of help just to get through the week so they can keep their lights on. They can pay for gas in their car to go to work. They can pay for daycare, whatever it is. Uh, we're saving them that little bit extra every week by giving them food. So, uh, you know, demand for that food pantry has obviously gone way, way, way up this Absolutely. year. Uh, Got to touch on this. For us as uh, Change Point family, w the reason that we have specifically canned peas <laughs> here today is because we are trying to restock the New Hope food pantry in advance of winter. Yeah. Uh, demand's way up, and we need to bring supply up to match. Um, so what are what are we collecting here, Adam? What what are you after? Yeah, so you <laughs> that's great. You've got uh, some canned peas. We've got some canned corn in front of me. But we're collecting anything. Canned soups, um, top ramen, uh, cereal, um, anything that's non-perishable, like we can take that and we can use it. And every item you bring in goes to a family in need. So if you bring in eight cans of corn, eight cans of green beans or peas, that's eight families you're serving. Um, if you bring in three or four boxes of cereal, that's four families that are going to use that and be able to feed their children with that, feed their grandparents with that, feed whoever's in their home. And so that's awesome. Um, I love thinking that way. Whenever I go shopping, I'm like, hey, I'm going to buy food for the food drive. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm not just buying eight cans for one family. I'm buying food for eight families. Um, and that's just, that's awesome for us. And we love to kind of embrace that and, and draw people to that. Food makes a, makes a big difference too, uh, in terms of like offsetting other costs. You were telling me about this. Why don't you speak to that for a moment? Yeah. So when people are struggling with financial resources in their lives, they generally cut food first. 
Food's an easy cost. You can extend that uh, package of noodles a little longer. You take a little less food. You can extend that cereal longer. Or, you know, you're going to use that can of peas and it's going to take two meals instead of one. Like, you're just going to have your portions will be smaller, which isn't healthy. Um, but when you do that, then that money you're saving for food, you're going to put towards your lights. You're going to put towards putting gas in your car, fixing your car, putting new tires on your car. You're going to put that to the new pair of boots you need because the winter's coming or the new hat or gloves or jacket. Um, or we we know a lot of families that will um, sacrifice eating themselves so that their children can eat. And you can find that if you if you Google any documentary on hunger related issues, you will find a number of families where the parents will go without food so that their kids can have food. And so what we want to do is say, OK, how about we do this? How about we give you enough food that you can eat, too, and then you can save money um, rather than sacrificing yourself or your own health to feed your children or your elderly parents that are living with you or whatever it may be. And do, do you see people lifted out of poverty through this program? I mean, is it? Yeah, how does it we, work? <laughs> we do. You, a lot of people say, oh, well, you're just you're giving them food and they're just staying where they're at. You're enabling them to not get a better job or to not move forward. And what we see is that's the opposite. Like what we really see is people come one. People only come for a season. So we have a number of families that we've served throughout the history of New Hope that come for a season. Uh, maybe they're seasonal workers and they work in the summer and then the winter comes and their money doesn't stretch as far as they thought it would. So then they, they come in and, and they get a little extra food so they can make it through till their job starts again. Um, but we've seen people who have come. We have a gentleman right now. His name is Randy. comes to us all the time. He's like, he's like, hey, what can I do for New Hope? I'm so excited because when I was hungry, you fed me and I needed a little extra to get through. I got through that season. I now own some properties. I'm now giving back to the community because you helped. You saved me a couple hundred dollars every month or whatever it was that I could then put towards buying property or buying this. And so now I have an opportunity to give back. And we hear those stories all the time. Uh, we have another lady. She's she's a uh, waitress and she used to come to us to get food for her and her son and her family. And um, she was in between jobs and then she got a job and now she comes back and she's like, hey, I want to just give you $25 because, you know, I love what you're doing and you helped me so much and you helped my son so much. And and those are the, the stories that just make it all worth it. Like, yeah, this is why we do what we do. So before we go any further, we got a question from uh, yeah. Adam on Church Online. He says, can we get a phone number to call and help volunteer with the food drive or New Hope, please? Yeah, absolutely. So give, him absolutely. The, give him the phone number. Yeah. <laughs> so the phone number is 907-274-4673. It's 907-274-4673. And we'd love to have that call, and we'd love for people to come volunteer. So I just put the Adam. I just put that in the chat as well. Awesome. So there we go. I think uh, yeah. his question has been properly answered. Yeah, perfect. So I went through a season of uh, poverty and food insecurity when I was a young dad, and mm. you, it really spoke to me what you just said in terms of uh, it wasn't food that I sacrificed, but it was nutrition. Mm. You know, ramen's cheap. And yeah. It's got four hundred calories for twenty five cents, right? Yep. So, um, it, but. Yeah, it'll keep you going, but you don't you don't feel good. It's not it's not good for your organs. It's like yeah. you're, you're not getting what you need. Yeah. So as we're doing this canned food drive, what would be uh, if if people don't know what to get? Yeah. They're going to Costco, they don't know what to get. They want to know some of the best things. Yeah. That they could get because they just want to make an impact today. What should they grab off the shelf? Yeah, absolutely. I would say the number. I would say three things. The top three things that you could get. The top three things yeah. that you can get. <laughs> The top three things that you could get if you wanted to bring is uh, fruits and vegetables. So canned vegetables. And we all like canned corn, but we also know that corn doesn't have the most nutritional value. So canned green beans, canned peas, canned mixed vegetables, canned um, carrots, those kind of things are awesome. And they're really hard to get um, for us. And so those would be number one. Number two would be canned fruits. Um, it's winter. Alaska doesn't have a great fruit and vegetable resource anyways this and then no. winter <laughs> winter it just gets worse and so i would definitely say the second one would be canned fruits uh mixed fruits peaches pears whatever it is it, canned fruits are good and then the third one is soup um these are our top three staples that we give out every week every week we give out a can of corn uh, a can of fruit and a can of soup 
Um, they're easy meals. They're also healthy additions to other meals. Um, and so any kind of soup, Dinty Moore soup, Campbell's soup, um, healthy choice soup, w whatever soup you like, somebody else likes too. So <laughs> just buy extra. <laughs> right, right, right. Use your own taste. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. So, you know, we were just, we were talking, we were thinking, yeah, hold up your box here. You, yeah. got, you got a box. It's got a box. This box has 12 cans. Yeah. Adam said something to me the <laughs> other day when I was down there. He said, look at this. He just picked up a box off the pew. We're in the, in the like uh, the sanctuary. He picks up the box off the pew and he goes, you know, this has 12 cans or 18 mm -hmm. cans, whatever. He says, you know, look at that number. That's w when you bring that here, we're going to break that apart. We're going to feed 12 families. Yeah. Right. It says 12 on this. It says 12 cans on the side yeah. of the box. We're going to use that to feed 12 families. Yeah. And that was just, that was a powerful moment for me. Like, I get it. The, the logic makes sense, but it was just it was just serious impact. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people ask us, like, well, how do you do that? You know, there's different size families. Um, what if you have a large family, like your family? What if you have a large family that comes in? You know, they're only getting one can of corn. Well, the cool thing about our food pantry, which isn't the same across the city for a lot of other food pantries, is you can come every week. So if you're a family in need, we're going to give you enough to help you that week. And then you could come back the next week and we'll give you a little more to help you for that week. And if you come back, so we're not just giving you, you know, a bag of groceries or a bunch of bag of groceries for the month and expecting you to survive. We're saying, okay, you can come every week. If that's what you need, you can come every week. Majority of our clients don't, they only come as they need it. Um, but it's available for folks if they do. Oh, and, and you take the help. I'll, I'll say as a father of five, if I'm yeah. struggling with food insecurity, I will take your bag. Yeah. And I will supplement that rather than starting from scratch. Absolutely. A absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. 100%. So mm -hmm. uh, we're doing the canned food drive here at Change Point, Raspberry Campus. We're collecting uh, here in the Commons between now and November 22nd. That's two Sundays from now. Uh, the, the New Hope Pantry is open all the time, but we... As a church, we want to rally together and make a big pile of food and and legitimately restock this pantry for oh, that'd winter. That would be so awesome. Because, yeah, I mean, demand's through the roof, right? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely time for the people of God to step mm -hmm. in and get stuff. So canned vegetables, number one. Yep. Canned fruit, number two. Canned soup, number three, would yeah, be like absolutely. the best things to get. And then anything else. You anything. know, I, I always tell people, if you, if you have a little extra this week and you want to go and say, hey, you know, what can I do to help somebody else? Instead of giving money on the side of the street or just, you know, giving money randomly, go pick up some food and bring it here. Um, and you're actually involving your family. If you shop with your kids, if you shop uh, with your spouse or wherever you shop, you're participating in that. You know, I appreciate... Uh, dollar resources too, but I think when we participate in it, it means so much more. So if I pick this can of corn up from Costco and I bring it here, I'm participating. I'm actually actively involved in feeding people. It's, it's something Jesus did. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Jesus fed people. Yeah. And so there's there's almost something like sacramental to it. Yeah. Right? And doing that with kids is great. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, when I was down there on Tuesday, I afterward, I immediately went home and told my wife that we should volunteer down there either as a family or as a life group. Yeah. You guys have a great setup down mm -hmm. there. Fantastic facility. Seemed very safe, very yeah. well organized. And I thought that would be such a powerful experience and also the time is now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the time is now to do it. So yeah. um, if people are, are interested in volunteering, what would be the, the easiest path to get a hold of you guys? Just call yeah. the number, yeah, come so downtown. What, what's absolutely. good? Absolutely. So th there's a lot of ways, right? <laughs> Just like there's a lot of ways to get involved here. There's a lot of ways to do almost anything anymore. Um, you can check out our website. So our website is newhopeak.org. Um, and there's a volunteer tab on there. You can click on there. It'll It'll send an email and information to our volunteer coordinator, and she'll give you a call back. That's super easy. You could call the office at the number we gave before, the 907 number, and we'll get a hold of you. We'll get, get you in the door. Um, you can also just show up. <laughs> so if you, if you come down to the office, we're there 9 to 4 every day, um, except Fridays. We do get to have one day off a week. Um, so I remember that from the rules. You're supposed to take a day <laughs> yes. off. In a week. Something yeah. about a Sabbath. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we're there uh, Monday through Thursday, 9 to 4. And then on Saturday, we're there 3.30 to 6.30. So you can come down any of those times, we'll get you put in. You know, we'll give you a crash course training on how to volunteer, how to do what you need to do, and we'll get you right to work. 
Um, if those hours or if there's something you want to do or you're afraid with COVID and you're like, hey, I just want to do my family. I don't want to do other people. I don't want to work with other people. Definitely give us a call. Um, drop us a line online and we'll work something out with you. Uh, we had a family just recently pick up a bunch of bags of rice and beans, uh, big 50 pound bags of those, and they're going to package them at home and bring them into us. Um, you know, so there's some opportunities for that as well. Um, there's small projects, you know, every building always needs some room that needs to be painted or um, something that needs to be cleaned or fixed. So we always have other projects around uh, to do. And then our Saturday program, we have a Saturday homeless church that we feed. And so we're always looking for folks who want to make some meals or want to come serve that or be a part of that. So there's lots of ways to volunteer. So we're going to talk homeless church just in a minute because that's <laughs> we're not just going to drop that bomb and then cruise on, get on with our lives. Uh, but before we do, I just want to let you guys know, Changepoint family, uh, I will put a link to the New Hope website on the quick links of the app. If you're watching at 930, it won't be there just yet. Uh, but if you're watching at 1130 or 6, it will be. So in quick links, we'll have a, a link directly yeah, to your web page. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so that if you are interested in volunteering, you can just go straight there from the app. Yeah, perfect. Sounds good. That sounds perfect. So, you know, we said executive director and pastor, and yeah. we kind of dropped this thing about a homeless church. Sure. So what, what and, and the homeless church is not the only church that you guys have going down right, there. So right, tell right. me about the spiritual stuff that's going on at New Hope Compassion Ministries. Yeah, so I like to tell everybody that we are a church that focuses on compassion rather than worship. You know, a lot of churches, we focus on worship, and that's what we do. That's what we're created for. That's um, what God has called us to do, to worship Him in spirit and truth. Um, so we focus more on compassion, but we still worship. And so uh, we have a homeless church that meets on Saturdays, and we serve about 50, 40, 50, sometimes higher, uh, men and women that come off the street. Not everybody who comes to that service is homeless, but the majority are. And uh, that's on Saturdays at 4.30. Um, I co-pastor with another gentleman, and, and he and I split the teaching. We split the pastoring of the folks there. And then after the service, we always have a meal. And it's just a warm thing. It's a warm place. It's um, an opportunity for folks to just come and uh, just experience Jesus and his love and compassion, get to know the, the Spirit of God. And, and it's awesome. But we're in this huge old building. The building was built in the 1940s, um, continued to be expanded, and it was housed this this great church. And uh, so we have this amazing facility. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's massive. And we don't want it to go to waste. And so we partner with local churches that are small, that can't afford their own building. And we say, come in and worship here. And so on Sunday mornings, our sanctuary is used twice. In the morning by a Spanish-English congregation, and uh, they're awesome. They're a great church. And in the afternoon by a Samoan congregation. And uh, they, too, are equally as amazing. Um, on Saturdays, we partner with a local uh, Seventh-day Adventist church to give them space to worship. We have another um, apostolic church um, that kind of meets in some other classrooms in our facility, and uh, they have a little sanctuary, mini sanctuary, and a mini fellowship hall, and, and they're just awesome. And for a while, we were investing in church plants. We had three church plants meeting downtown, and uh, they were really working hard to reach people for Jesus Christ. And uh, unfortunately, COVID hit, and they couldn't meet in person, and uh, you and I know, and, and I'm sure people online know, how hard it is to do church online. <laughs> and uh, It's kind of complicated. It, it is. It is. And when you're a real small church with a bivocational pastor, and, and it's just, it was extremely difficult for them. And, and unfortunately, they, they had to close, and we were really sad about that. But uh, we'd love to partner again. So, you know, we have space, and we want to invest in the kingdom of God. You know, it's not just about new hope. It's about the kingdom and whatever that looks like. I love it. Uh, we got another question here yeah. from the from the chat. Uh, so the this specific question is: Hey, we got a forty eight pack of ramen from Costco. Mm -hmm. The big box is already open, but there are about thirty individual unopened packages remaining. You want it? Yes. Okay. So yes. So the let's expand that out. If you have a big kind of Costco pack size box of things, and some of them have been used, but you've got a bunch left over. Absolutely, New Hope will take that. Oh stuff yeah, the same. With, you know, the same with these boxes. You yeah. know, if you're like, "Hey, I'm going to buy this from Costco, but my family needs four. Can we bring the rest, or we need half?" That's totally okay. Um, you know, we don't just want these. We want the individual cans as well, or the individual packs of Top Ramen, or 
you know, well, a lot of those multi-pack things we'll definitely need and use and give out. So there's there's your answer. And if you're going to do this, guys, we'll go back to the, like, if you have kids, bring your kids with you to do this. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. They Like, it's it's safe. They can come there. And, and you're teaching them, right? You're showing so, them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so you're creating in your children a lifelong habit of um, generosity, um, a lifelong habit of being uh, gracious. And that's what we want. You know, as parents, eventually we're not going to be here and someone else is going to have to continue the work that we do. And so that's uh, it's awesome to bring your kids with you, get them involved. And they're going to remember 2020 for the rest of their lives, no yeah. matter what, right? It's mm -hmm. the year we didn't go to school. It's the year there was no yeah. football. It's the year, okay, right? Like they're going to remember that for forever and ever. But what did mom and dad do in that season? Yeah. And I think it would be a great thing for them to see that one of the things mom and dad did is they started <laughs> delivering food on a regular basis oh, yeah. to this place, right? Mm -hmm. And when they're a little bit older, you know, why did you do that? And yeah, you know, the va the values demonstrated there. So absolutely, absolutely really wonderful. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so you didn't even mention the homeless church in your list of churches. What was that? <laughs> Six, seven I, churches? How yeah. Many? Yeah. Uh, we were up to, at one point, we were up to, I believe, eight churches. Um, we've kind of dropped down to that. I think we're at like five now. Um, but our homeless church is, is our priority. That's the one that we actually minister through. Uh, we pastor, we, in, we involve, we, uh, I lead music for that every week. My daughter was leading that before she went to college. Like it's, it's, it's a passion of ours. When you say executive director, and pastor you mean of that that's yes. the, that's where the yes. pastoring goes yes in. yes so is is it called homeless church no it's is called it it's called name? new hope christian fellowship okay new hope christian so, fellowship yeah uh new hope christian fellowship church and um it's it's just a it's an awesome place um it's one of those, if you would come, you could, you're welcome to come worship with us too. If you have a Saturday night and you just want to like join church. I'm definitely uh, going to come worship with you on a Saturday it's, night. It's really cool because it brings people from all backgrounds, um, not just economic backgrounds, but uh, cultural backgrounds. You know, we have a huge native population here in Anchorage that's homeless. And a lot of the folks that come worship with us are Alaska native. And, um, but it, it just draws us all into one place, which is really what the kingdom of God is about, right? It's about people from diverse backgrounds, um, folks who ha are housed and folks who are unhoused, uh, folks who are, um, you know, Caucasian, folks who are Alaska Native, folks who are Hispanic. We, we have a whole bunch of people that come together and we worship together and uh, we celebrate, we sing, uh, we pray for each other. We're about ready to do uh, a baby dedication. We've done baptisms. I mean, it's just, it's a church. It's a church. And our, our, target, our target audience is the Native, or not the Native, is the homeless population in Anchorage. And uh, we get to meet a lot of those folks. And uh, it's fun when I go to bigger events around town, um, whether it's Project Homeless Connect, which is in January, which is a, uh, an opportunity for us to count and connect with homeless folks uh, around the city. Um, I'm often called pastor, 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 hey, pastor. And uh, I, I kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I like being considered uh, a pastor to the homeless community. It's, it's uh, encouraging and it's what God called me to do. So it works. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, because you're not you're not from Alaska. Where are you from? I'm not. I'm from Pennsylvania. So I'm an East Coast guy that just picked up and you just got lost. Yeah, I I was driving and <laughs> made a wrong turn and just taken a left at Albuquerque. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I drove through Canada and I was like, oh well, hey, I'm back in the United States, so let's just stay here. That's <laughs> my, my passport works. My money works. Right, right. So we're we're short on time. Yeah, man. Are there things that uh, that you would like the Change Point family to hear that, sure. that I didn't give you a question for, right? <laughs> like, this is kind of open, open mic to you to talk yeah. to our Change Point family. Yeah, so uh, first I want to say thanks, man. Change Point is awesome. I've been at this job for a little over six years. Um, my predecessor was actively involved in Change Point. I think actually when he left New Hope, he came on staff here as Brian Schaefer. And, yeah, yeah. and so for as long as I've been at New Hope, Change Point has been actively involved in what we do. Um, we've had small groups come and do whatever we ask them to do, like, hey, paint this room. Hey, clean up this trash. And, and they do it with a smile, you know? <laughs> Good job, Which everybody. Which is awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, thank you. Like, um, thanks for doing this and, and just thanks for prayer and support. And that's awesome. So number one is, is thanks. Um, 
but I would just encourage people to be compassionate. You know, in, uh, in Matthew, and Jesus fed the 5,000, and the disciples came to him, and they were like, hey, um, these people need food. Uh, we should let them go. And Jesus looked at his disciples, and he said, no, you feed them. He had great compassion on the people, and he told his disciples to do the work. Mm. Um, so we are a compassionate ministry center. We have great longing to see people supported and helped, but we can't do it by ourselves. Um, we don't have a huge staff. There's only three of us. <laughs> I'm the only one that's full-time. Everybody else is part-time or super part-time, I like to say. And so I'm the only one there all the time, and I can't do it by myself. My staff can't do it. We need people. We need people to volunteer. We need people to donate. We need people to support. And, um, you know, whatever that is, and however little bit, one can. You're impacting one family. Um, that's huge. Uh, you know, to think in, in the grand scheme of this world, to say, man, I helped one family. You know, I helped that person. They were in need. And uh, it made a difference. You know, on Tuesday, you were there on Tuesday, and uh, when we, we have our food pantry open, um, you know, you get more out of it than probably the people get there. You know, they get a, oh, a sure. bag of food and you're like, oh my gosh, this was an awesome experience. Um, and we're actually starting a new program in two weeks. We're going to be doing home delivery. So we're mm -hmm. going to be, uh, we got a van, we've got drivers, and we're going to be delivering food to people's homes who can't get there. So we're like expanding our ministry and we're going to need more food. <laughs> so that's your like the right time. Um, and we're going to be able to get to where people are, not just have them come to us. So we're pretty excited about that, too. Yeah, you mentioned in the video that uh, you serve uh, a lot of older clients, or yeah. people who are maybe in a higher risk category. Mm -hmm. And how has that been this year? Is, yeah, they, so with COVID, is it affecting people? I mean, yeah, the... it, it's hysterical. So we've seen our numbers grow, right? We've talked about that, you know, a thousand new families over the last six, whatever, eight months that COVID's been here. Um, and so that's huge. But we've also seen folks not come. Uh, we've seen a lot of people not come because they were afraid. We would hear stories of, hey, can I pick up for my friend because they don't want to come out. They're afraid of, uh, of getting COVID and they need food. You know, people who were staying home even though they were hungry. Mm. Um, and so we're trying to find new ways to reach those people. How can we get more food to families who aren't able to come out? Seniors, disabled folks, uh, folks who are immune compromised, whatever it may be. And so we're hoping that our new delivery service will catch on and we'll be able to to reach more and more families. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, we are out of time. Change Sweet. Point family. That <laughs> breezes Man, right by, doesn't by. it? Yeah, absolutely. Adam, I cannot thank you enough uh, for joining us on the yeah, Commons man. today. I'm sure we'll be talking to you uh, plenty more. With Thanks, Tony. I appreciate the it, man. Rest of the year. Awesome. Change Point family, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week, and we'll see you next Sunday.